the other part about epithelial cells. The video touched on this. <clears throat> because of their structure, and remember, one of the things about us, we are organized organisms, okay? So they have what they term these specialized connections. They were mentioned in the, the video. You want to go back and review it because it's now in the PowerPoint. So when you guys go to open the PowerPoint at home, it'll be there for you to see them. So they talked about like the tight junctions. They talked about gap junctions. They talked about desmosomes. These, these, these connections that exist and because of where these cell types are found are the reason that these connections are needed. In some cases, we need it to be that tight junction. If you remember, the tight junction went all the way around the cell, didn't let anything through, blah, blah, blah. Okay? The goal, have those junctions, have the ability to form a permeability layer, i.e., skin. Keeps us waterproof. Have them be able to bind cells together. Hold one cell to the next. Some cases, hold the cell to the base. Have the ability to give a mechanism for cell-to-cell -cell communication. Intercellular. One cell to the next. So, if you look at this picture, all right, tight junctions, we've got desmosomes, we can have a hemi, hemi means half, okay, hemi desmosome, we can have gap junctions, all right. We are either holding cells together, doing something to affect movement of the materials. Because remember, these cells are excellent for movement of materials. Do you remember in the video the little molecule that went either directly through the cell or it, it showed it going between the cell or going from cell to cell? Did you guys remember that in the video? Okay. so. The desmosomes, go back to our picture, okay? These right here, I think the video referred to them as looking like a button. I never thought of that, okay? That was kind of new to me. And then here, a half one, okay? A hemi, all right? So if I got a hemi, y'all remember that? Okay, all right. Car still has that? Yeah. It's a Dodge. It's like a trademark. It means it's supposed to go real fast. I don't know. But, okay, so desmosomes, looking like a little button, disc shaped of that cell membrane, often found where there might be stress on the cell. They have adhesive glycoproteins. Do you guys remember? The little um, glyco meaning the carbs, okay? The carb chain. So they're trying to represent those carb chains in between them, okay? Intermediate protein filaments. They're trying to represent those filaments going here and here and here, all right? Up through here, here, and here, all right? And we can see this very good, for example, in striated, I wonder if that's supposed to be stratified, I, or got a squamous epithelium. I think I got a um, typo. 
Okay. Um, stratified. Y'all correct that on your little hand out. Epithelium of the skin. The hemidesmosome was this one down here. But once again, little protein filaments, okay? The little glycoproteins. But this time, doing something with the base, most likely, of the cell. Tight junctions. Do you remember in the video talking about adherence and occludens? Okay, zonula, zonula, zone, zone, adhere, occlude. Does that make sense? The zone to adhere, the zone to occlude. So, tight junctions hold the cell together that goes, and, and they're trying to represent it, going all the way around the cell. It's on all sides of the cell. They say that you will have the zone to adhere. This would be an area between adjacent cells acting like a glue, simply helping to hold those cells together. Good example, simple epithelium. The zone to occlude, this is helping create permeability barriers. For example, the stomach. As we eat, the one thing about the stomach, pH is very low. pH is about 2. We do not need that pH leaking out of that organ. We need it to stay in. So the, this type of connection would help hold those cells together so that that acidic material does not make it to the body. Same thing for the bladder. Remember we talked about the acidity of the urine, okay? And it helps keep that acidic material from moving out, if that makes sense. Occlude means to keep out, okay? <clears throat> gap junctions. Just like their name implies, there's a gap from one cell to the next. The goal is for helping make sure materials can move from one cell to the next. For example, the best example I can give are the gap junctions that exist in cardiac muscle. The heart, where the heart is beating, ba bump, ba bump, ba bump. Believe it or not, it is not one movement. It is the contraction of all of those cells, and based on the ions flowing from one cell to the next, that it is in such great control that it makes the heart look like it's going boo boom, boo boom. But it's cell to cell to cell based on those gap junctions, which is kind of cool. So, um, the cell connections that are existing, okay? Now, the other part about epithelia. Epithelia has glands. Think about sweat gland. Think about oil glands, okay? Now, in this that we have right here. Note how they're trying to represent glands, all right? They're showing a gland that's not attached to a hair, and the duct that'll be leading to the outside of the body. Here, they're showing a gland, and they're showing a gland, they're showing gland, they're showing gland, they're showing gland, okay? <coughs> The ducts, all right, D-U-C-T's, all right, they lead to the outside environment. The protection for us to the outside environment, which is very harsh to us, believe it or not, okay? The environment is very harsh, and the goal is for this 
tissue type, the, these cells, all right, to help keep stuff out, all right, and it's aligning to the outside environment. So in these glands that we're going to find, in the body as a whole, under glands, we say we have endocrine and we have exocrine. Endocrine are something all to themselves. That's going to be a whole system that you study in 142. If anything leads to the outside of the body, well, some of these organs excrete into like the digestive system. For our purposes, we're looking at exocrine, a material that goes to the exterior of the body. And they have ducts, D-U-C-T's. So, guess what? They get classified. <clears throat> Everything is classified. So, <clears throat> we classify them by their structure. Are they unicellular or multicellular? Unicellular are goblet cells. If we get into multicellular, it gets a little more complicated, but we are going to find that we can have the ducts that they will say are simple, which at this point, hopefully you're associating simple with being about one, okay? Compound, well, compound mean, well, it's a compound problem. Lots of pieces to it, once again. Compound's going to let us know here, lots of pieces. If it is a simple duct, very few branches occur. This is simple, but not a lot of branches. This, however, is compound. Not only quite a few branches, but branches, 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 branches from that. Okay? So, this is kind of showing what we might see in the stomach and colon, glands that we might see in a portion of the stomach, some that we might see in the small intestines, some that we might see in the skin, sebaceous glands down here, mucous glands that we will see, mammary glands, which are only found in one area of the body, the pancreas. So, there are terms that are going to help with their structure. If the duct ends in tubules or sac-like structures, they have what's termed asini. For example, the pancreas. Looks like we've got these little bubbles that are existing off of them. If they're just simple, they're termed alveoli. So, do they have one of those represented? Looks like a grape. It's not represented on the picture, but it just looks like a grape. So, here's what happens because if all of these are glands, this means they produce a product. Is that right? If it's a sweat gland, we got to produce the sweat. If it's an oil gland, it gives us the oil. Pancreas, for example, would give us digestive enzymes into the digestive system. Mammary glands would give milk through the nipple to the baby. You, do you see where I'm going with this? So they give a product. Well, therefore, the epithelia that is present one of the things about epithelia was secretion, okay? So these are going to be parts of the body that secrete a product. Now, the difference is how they secrete it. What do you notice about the difference between the three pictures? <coughs> The 
what looks like the cells on the inside. 